Now, from the world of art to the murky depths of reality, journalist Jacques Peretti has been in search of the truth, and he's found it with anonymous whistleblowing internet site WikiLeaks, the brown paper envelope of the digital age, striking fear into the hearts of everyone with something to hide. Hello, welcome to the opening of an item about investigative journalism. There's an investigative journalist, that's me, trying to look moody and not fall over in the snow as I go in search of another scoop. Scoops are thin on the ground, but even if I was to get one, I probably wouldn't be able to report it. There are currently 300 injunctions out. That's gagging orders protecting the secrets of government and big business. London is the go-to place if you want to keep something secret. Tiger Woods' lawyers came to London when they wanted an injunction to prevent pictures being published around the world. Yet at this very moment of clampdown, something has emerged that could set us free in a whole new way. A portal via an obscure website, on which anyone in the world can post any leak whatsoever. It's called WikiLeaks, and no, it's absolutely nothing to do with Wikipedia. Though no one outside of the webosphere has even heard of WikiLeaks, the fact is that it's becoming massively important. Making public the BMP membership lists, and military documents regarding the legality of the war in Iraq. It's been said that in just three years, WikiLeaks has published more scoops than the Washington Post has in 30. Alan, can you tell me when you first heard about WikiLeaks? I think I first heard about WikiLeaks a couple of years ago, and I don't know that I took it really seriously until I, I met a lawyer at a party who specialised in media stuff. Uh, and she just said that WikiLeaks was the one thing that the, the best lawyers in London, who tend to be the best lawyers in, in closing down information, had yet to work out how to crack this. So it makes injunction useless, doesn't it? It presents the, the English courts with a, with a big problem, um, because if you've got a, a, a website that is essentially international or, or beyond national, that is operating to its own rules, then a court injunction is meaningless. Do you think that it's going to change the idea of an investigative journalist and what investigative journalism is? Well, I, th I think it is already changing the, the idea of investigation. So that idea of, of publishing raw source material uh, is, a, is a very powerful one. WikiLeaks has allowed us to access huge dossiers of secret information. They've even come to the aid of bloggers, such as Guido Fawkes, who broke the Northern Rock email scandal, the first warning signs of the impending financial meltdown. He escaped litigation by publishing the email not on his site, but on WikiLeaks. So you're quite open about the fact you'd use WikiLeaks? Oh, no, I've written to all the law firms. I've written to all the main law firms saying that if they send me a super injunction anymore, I will use my own judgment, and if I think it's in the public interest, I will give it to WikiLeaks. I've got a lot less injunctions since then. WikiLeaks preserves the anonymity of the leaker by bouncing the leak through a network of servers around the world. The more people who use the network, the harder it becomes to unpick. Or at least that's how it's supposed to work. But do you think there's going to become a moment where, <clears throat> you know, the life of a, a kind of Chinese dissident is on the line, you know, because of a decision that WikiLeaks make? That's happened already. It's happened, um, Yahoo gave up the... IP address, the, the postcode for the internet, of one of its email users, and that guy ended up in jail. So beware. Some ways, I think you're better off sending um, a letter. But this is a major, major shift. I mean, it's going to shift the power balance from those people over there to people like you. I think it is, because the only way they can stop it is by going down the uh, Chinese and Iranian route, which is having the great firewall of China. They're going to have to decide whether they want to be very authoritarian and all the restrictions that places on people. You know, Google pulling out of China because it's too authoritarian is a real possibility. Yeah. So it, there's a cost to being that kind of restrictive. The internet may provide an opportunity to bring governments down, but it also provides an opportunity for unprecedented surveillance. I'm trying to contact John Young, a pioneer of internet leaking, a libertarian who believes in the complete freedom to publish absolutely anything, including our conversation which he posted in its dull entirety hours after we spoke. Looks like we've lost connection. He's an ultra-suspicionist to boot, and wisely suspicious of me. First of all, I think the Internet is a, is a gigantic spying machine. I think that anyone who thinks that it's, that, that it's not surveilling um, everyone that's using it is, is deceiving themselves. What to you are the limitations of WikiLeaks? What are the problems with WikiLeaks? Well, first I should say it's a great organisation. 
They're doing a wonderful job. Uh, and uh, uh, whatever reservations I have about them is not terribly important. I think that we need a lot more WikiLeaks than just one. And that raises one issue, which is that um, um, we need multiple WikiLeaks. It's dangerous to have only one or two. I've had a hard time speaking to anyone connected with the site, but at the last minute I finally had word that Julian Assange, the man behind it all, is willing to talk to me. The problem is he's in Iceland and I'm stuck in London. But there is a solution. Interview him over the airwaves. Cue second weird interview scenario of the film. Hello, is Julian there? Speaking, Jack. Hello, Julian. Um, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. I much appreciate it. You're welcome. You're in quite a sort of unique position in history and that you can actually publish on the internet and yet the libel laws in each country are specific to that country and therefore there's a sort of lag. They haven't yet caught up with you. They don't really know how to deal with you when it appears on WikiLeaks. The first time in history uh, where there has been, at least for significant documents, a truly free press. Um, that's never happened before. There is an interesting question as to what will be the free press standard uh, of the 21st century because all media is moving onto the internet. So will it be the, the union of good laws across the world that protect a freedom of press, which protects democracy, or will it be the intersection of those laws? Uh, will our standards be those of China uh, or the UK, or will they be standards that are more akin to the, the values of the United States and the the values and standards of countries like Sweden. There's a fork in the road for journalism, and we can go one way or the other. Um, and uh, everyone should try and decide and fight to go in the way that will protect uh, our ability and everyone's ability uh, to communicate important information to the public. Isn't it the case, Julian, that sort of gathering attention to yourselves leaves you vulnerable? It's a bit like putting up a flag to government saying, shoot me. What we've found in practice is that uh, by gathering attention, we have generated a lot of support. So we have an enormous support base now uh, in the general community, but especially amongst the press. So it's extremely hard uh, to successfully attack us. And as a result, we have become a sort of vanguard of journalism. So we take the hardest publishing cases in the world and deal with them. And by doing that, we create a space behind us that permits other people to successfully publish. Um, we have, to a degree, um, redefined what is normal. And because we've been going three years now, uh, we have become part of the status quo of the internet. Uh, and that's a really important outcome. We're at an extraordinary moment. Via WikiLeaks, investigative journalism is turning a corner into a new world. But the really exciting thing is that in five years' time, people like me will be out of a job because everyone will have the tools to be an investigative journalist and no one, no matter how good their lawyers will be, will be able to stop that. Next tonight, Mark Kermode meets director Peter Jackson, best known for his epic trilogy, The Lord of